Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce today's opening speakers, the Director of the Army Cyber Institute and the Director of the NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence. Colonel Andrew Hall is, a, is the Director of the Army Cyber Institute. He studied computer science at West Point, applied mathematics at the Naval Postgraduate School, and operations research at the Robert H. Smith School of Business at the University of Maryland. He has served on the Army staff, Joint Staff, and the Multinational Command Iraq and 18th Airborne Corps staff deployed in Iraq. He is a cyber officer and was very instrumental in creating the Army's newest cyber branch. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Colonel Andrew Hall. Thank you, Gretchen. Well, thank you again. Great to see so many people here today to, to start off the beginning. And we are going to start today talking a little bit about uh, the two centers, the Army Cyber Institute as well as the Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence in Tallinn, Estonia. For the Army Cyber Institute, we have, were established in 2012 by the Secretary of the Army and the Chief of Staff of the Army in coordination with General Hernandez, who was at the time the commander of Army Cyber, or the newest of the uh, the Army three-star commands that is, of course, of so interest to all of us. But it was established to, to do three things that they thought that we needed uh, to do in order to find the way that the Army was going to employ forces in the cyber domain. And so, really, the first thing that we were to do was to do research to expand the cyber domain because the body of knowledge was a little bit nascent, and even if the cybersecurity body of knowledge is pretty strong and the deterrence body of knowledge is pretty strong, the, the linkages between those bodies of work had quite a bit of, uh, of future research. And so we were, we were set up to expand the body of knowledge. So part of that is us doing research, but a lot of that is working with other academics from across the United States and finding more PhD students to turn the crank on more knowledge. That, is, that ties into the partnership idea where we are supposed to be helping the Army by finding the right partnerships. And that's partnerships with academia, it's partnerships with industry, it's partners, partnerships across the joint force and with our allies overseas. And so each one of the, uh, the partnerships we have, it's always designed to be a partnership where both of the, the parties come together with something to offer the other one so we get a chance to, to exchange and be mutually beneficial as opposed to some of the ideas are we just contract for things and a contract is not a partnership and we're trying to find ways to partner with industry and academia so we both get into mutually beneficial relationships. And then w being stationed at West Point, everything that we do at West Point is about leader development. And We've been focusing this last year on leader development in really two areas. One is in the pre-commissioning area, where it's looking at the way that we find program and curriculum for all of our officers, not just our cyber officers, but all of our officers in the cyber domain. Because as was mentioned by General Milley yesterday, when you have five domains to fight in, all of our officers need to know how to fight in all five of them. And to have all of our officers trained for four domains and only a few people for the fifth is the recipe for failure. And so as we work on pre-commissioning tasks, we're working on how you do the pre-commissioning training for all of ROTC, for all of our West Point cadets. And then we've also a uh, continuing effort with our senior military colleges, because as we work with the senior military colleges, we have an opportunity to work across all the services and work on how we'll get that curriculum developed and presented so that when our officers are, are graduating as either ensigns or lieutenants, that they are ready to operate in all five of the domains. So our institute at West Point, we have right now 60 uh, people working together at the Army Cyber Institute. We have 30 that are military, 30 that are civilians. Of the 30 that are civilians, we have 15 that are academic fellows, and the other 15 are the support staff that run everything that it takes to, to run an institute. And the 15 faculty members that we have, along with our military, teach in eight of the 13 academic departments at West Point. 
So we teach across the entire curriculum, trying to ensure that the parts of cyber that are important in philosophy make it into the core philosophy program, that the parts of cyber that are important in law make it into the core law program, and the parts for mathematics, engineering are all present as a part of the core. When we're looking at a 47-month experience at West Point, adding more courses with every new topic is unsustainable. You end up with the 10-pound bag problem. And we, as we continue to add, we, we have to find ways to just uh, draw a thread through all of the curriculum so that we are working on defending and, and really how you operate in all five domains. And so as we work and as we're placed throughout the academy, we, we work with all of the department heads at West Point to try to find the ways that we can help augment their program and make their programs better in regard to the cyber domain which is, as everyone here knows, more than just cybersecurity. It's, uh, cybersecurity is very important, but what we're really talking about is teaching our young people how to operate in the cyber domain. So the, um, I, I talked about we want to do research. We also want to do partnerships. So two of the things that we are doing that are designed to be outreach to our academic partners are establishing the Cyber Defense Review Journal as well as teaming with the Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence in, in Tallinn, Estonia to bring SciCon US to the United States to have a venue for creating the community that we need across all of our uh, NATO allies as well as uh, academics from around the world having a place to come together and to share ideas. The Cyber Defense Review is uh, currently in its fifth edition, you've seen them in your, uh, when, you, when you registered, you got a copy of the Cyber Defense Review. It's also available online. And for all the academics uh, in, the, in the room, we'd encourage you to consider uh, sending in an article. And also, starting with the new year, it's going to be uh, located on JSTOR as a part of the securities collection. And so uh, being available on JSTOR is going to be a great opportunity to spread the, the work that we're doing in cyber on a multi multidisciplinary stage uh, for all of us. And so we're really excited to be, to be getting that. And so as we, uh, as we work, research, partnerships, and uh, leader development, we really have SciCon as a, a flagship opportunity for us to come together. And it happens twice a year, where you get the one opportunity to go to, to Tallinn, Estonia in the summer and then another time to come here. And then between all the rest of the time, we've got the Cyber Defense Review, an opportunity for you to, to share ideas and to uh, read about the great things that are happening uh, in, our, in our community. And so I, I'm, uh, I'm really excited about, about what we have left for today. And uh, I'm excited that all of you are here to, to participate, but also, uh, Everyone that is in this room is a part of the conversation, and we're glad to have all of the midshipmen here yet today, um, that we, uh, we've added the midshipmen to the rest of our uh, cadets, so welcome to all of you uh, as well. But next, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, or I'm, I'm going to welcome to the stage, the director of the Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence. And Merle Magre is, she became the director of the NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence in September 2017. From 2012 to 2017, she served as a security policy advisor to the president of Estonia. In this capacity, she was the president's chief advisor on domestic and international security issues, including the development and challenges of cyber defense. Before that, she was a policy advisor to NATO Secretary General, Anders Fo Rasmussen. Ms. Magre also worked at the International Center for Defense and Security, primarily focused on Ukraine policy and development, including the security situation in Crimea. She holds degrees from King's College in London, Middlebury College, and Tartu University. She's also studied at John Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies, Bologna Center, and the Paris Institute of Political Studies. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to welcome Ms. Mara Malgre, Director of the NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence. Good morning. Good morning. Greetings from the front line. 
as uh, it was said yesterday, Fancy Bear uh, has been extending invitations to this conference, and this is a really special attention. It's also a very symbolic attention, because 10 years ago, uh, in 2007, Estonia's advanced digital infrastructure was hit by waves of cyber attacks during a period of heightened tensions with Russia. And the attacks against Estonia also fastened up the um, establishment of our center, the NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence in Tallinn. And building on that, I'd like to share with you today three thoughts. First, a take on threats, how we see it. Secondly, as these attacks in Estonia in 2007 set off a still ongoing debate in NATO about the role of cyber operations and the changing nature of cyber threats and conflicts, I will share with you about where NATO is with this debate today. And thirdly, I'd like to tell how our center, the CCD COE, is making a difference in the context of all this. So first, the threats. NATO, uh, Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence, is hosted by Estonia. And Estonia cannot really ignore the fact that it is located next to a powerful neighbor that uses aggressive rhetoric, that is investing into cyber attack, uh, cyber attack capabilities and for whom activities directed against other states in cyberspace are merely an instrument to increase and influence, uh, increase uh, influence and accomplish uh, objectives. On the other hand, attacks in cyberspace do not pay attention to geography, so therefore uh, we need to be aware of what's going on in cyberspace more generally. So I'd like to share with you um, three trends of the threat picture as, as we see it from the Baltic Sea region. First, growingly, risks are coming from state nexus attackers who uh, employ cyber capabilities to conduct political and military intelligence gathering as well as economic espionage. And in some cases have the capability to carry out destructive attacks. These are states that ignore the applicability of international law in cyberspace, yet are developing cyber warfare capabilities. Second trend, as we see it from the Baltic Sea region, is targeted attacks against critical uh, infrastructure. Thirdly, we note a trend that machines are attacking machines. So, on to NATO. Last year, NATO decided to establish cyber as a domain alongside air, sea, and land. Now, the Alliance is delivering on that. In NATO, in Brussels, as we gather here today, in Brussels, NATO defense ministers have been meeting yesterday and today. And as the NATO Secretary General expressed to the press yesterday, when it comes to different national cyber capabilities, they are as any other national military capabilities owned by nations. Nations own their planes, nations own their ships, and they own their cyber capabilities just along the same lines. And they can share that with other allies and they can deploy them in NATO missions and operations. So last year, NATO heads of states and governments uh, in NATO summit in Warsaw, signed a defense, cyber defense pledge where they outlined how nations can improve their ability to protect, how nations can uh, protect their national cyber networks. Cyber defense is part of NATO's collective defense. Cyber defense is also part of NATO's response to hybrid warfare. Cyber attacks can damage allied economies, transport and communication systems, energy systems, 
and the measures approved with the Cyber Defense Pledge will help to make allied societies more resilient and better prepared. Resilient national cyber defenses are vital to the collective defense. NATO has uh, developed some detailed metrics related to the Cyber Defense Pledge, and it regularly reports how nations are doing uh, and delivering on their commitments based on these metrics. Thirdly, NATO defense ministers today also discuss how to strengthen the cyber component of NATO's command structure. NATO's command structure really is the military backbone of the alliance. It is what makes NATO unique. It is what enables these 29 militaries to work as one. And NATO has regularly updated its command structure over the past decades to take account of the changing nature of cyber and security environment changes. In every military operation, there will be a cyber component. Therefore, cyber will also be part of the review and the adaption of the NATO command structure. But this is not only about commands. NATO also needs to ensure that the roads and bridges are really strong enough to take the largest vehicles, that rail networks are equipped for the rapid deployment of tanks and heavy uh, equipment. NATO has military requirements for civilian infrastructure, and much of this infrastructure is controlled by computer networks. So NATO looks into how to update this and to ensure that current military needs are taken into account. This is not a job for NATO alone. It requires close coordination again, uh, across national governments and also with the private sector. The European Union also has an important role to play in this, so NATO and the Euro European Union must continue to work very closely in this vital issue. So now to my third dimension, our center, the CCD-COE, the NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence. What are we doing? How do we come into the picture besides being a partner in this conference? Well, the cybersecurity cannot really be ensured by any nation alone, no matter the size. In 10 years, our NATO Cyber Center has grown from seven founding members to, seven, uh, to 20 nations strong and capable international team. The heart of the center is really a di diverse group of international experts, including legal scholars, policy and strategy specialists, who join forces with uh, technical researchers from military, government, and private sector background. I recognize how important it is that 17 NATO countries and three EU, European Union, partners have contributed across these 10 years to the success of our center by sending their best people to Tallinn. And I thank all our member nations for that. Our NATO CCD COE's mission is to support our member nations, NATO and NATO, as well as the partners in the field of cyber defense research, training, and exercises. The center provides its members and NATO with cyber defense expertise in four focus areas, technology, strategy, operations, and law. CCDCOE has launched the Tallinn Manual, so far the most comprehensive guide about the application of international law in cyberspace, but there was a whole panel dedicated to Tally Manual um, yesterday, and, and several keynote speakers previously have made a reference to that, so I won't get into the detail of that, uh, of that. Instead, I'd like to take some time to tell you about another flagship of ours, Locked Shields, which is the world's largest and most complex live fire cyber defense exercise. Organized since 2010, it focuses on training for technical experts, policy staffers, 
legal and media advisors who are responsible for national cybersecurity. The aim of the exercise is to teach both the military and civilians about cross-dependencies from each other, to teach them to work and understand each other's systems. Lock Shields really focuses on the cutting edge technologies, networks, and attack methods. Every year, 20 national or multinational teams are put under intense pressure to maintain the networks and services of a fictional country. Over the course of a week, 20 blue teams have to respond to cyber incidents and maintain the work of a large-scale SCADA system controlling the power grid or a military command and control system, military surveillance drone and ground station controlling the drone, and programmable logic controllers, PLCs, used all around the world for controlling the military and civilian infrastructure. Our training teams have to deal with simple answers, really, simple tasks. How to report about technical developments in a humanly readable form. How to deal with legal questions. How to respond best to the media. One of the challenges of cyber attacks is also attribution. So to identify the side who is behind the attack. So one of the issues we are addressing in our exercise is also how we improve the technology, the methods to identify who is behind cyber attack attribution. Finally, CCD COE organizes SciCon in Estonia. SciCon conference in Tallinn, Estonia has been going on for nearly 10 years. It was started under the encouragement of my former boss, President Thomas Silvas, the former president of Estonia. He was really concerned. His, his reasons for, for starting the conference for, for supporting it so strongly since the beginning was a concern about the huge disconnect we have between IT and politics. And SICON, since the beginning, as a platform for discussions, was an attempt to build that bridge, to build a bridge over that gap between the IT techies and policy makers, politicians. President Ilves also started the tradition of SICON in Tallinn being opened by a keynote speech of the president. He concluded his very first speech at the SICON with a non-specialist's plea to the audience of cyber experts. And I quote, he said, please, do everything possible to alert our policymakers, your, your elected officials, to realize what the threats are. In NATO, we spend hundreds and hundreds of billions of do dollars and euros on defense against kinetic war, but we spend preciously little on cyber defense. We fail, he said, to realize that a potential aggressor no longer needs to attack us with an army. Today, you don't need an army. You need, all you need is a keystroke. So that was the plea made 10 years ago. I think today, a decade later, a decade later after the cyber attacks against Estonia, NATO, together with the help and support of our Cyber Defense Center of Excellence, has made progress and is better understanding cyber threats and is doing better in investing into building cyber skills to meet those threats. As our CCD COE is meeting its 10th anniversary, it is important for us to take this work even further, to continue to dig deeper in our focus areas, technology, strategy, operations and law, while reaching out to new international audiences. Our goal for the next 10 years is to really keep up with the mo momentum and keep up the drive. It is clear, the digital world is accelerating at an exponential rate. We cannot afford to stop, 
we cannot really rest, afford to rest on laurels. We have to keep on working on innovative ideas that are ahead of our time. We have to keep on trying. The travel continues. Thank you.